Hello, my name is Johnny Binder, General Curator for Cameron Park Zoo. Today on this edition of Step Into the Wild, we're going to be talking about raptors, our birds of prey, the hawks and the eagles and the owls of the area. Today our bird department personnel will be kind of showing us how the raptors and birds of prey that we have here at Cameron Park Zoo are great ambassadors and representatives for their counterparts in the wild areas. So please join me today as we step into the wild. Hi, my name is Sean Strahila and I am the animal care manager of the bird department and I'd like to tell you a little bit about our raptor program. It started out with a, just a couple of exhibits that we had, our bald eagle exhibit as well as our king vulture exhibit in uh, South America and then like behind me we have our Kara Kara exhibit. But we wanted to kind of expand that and bring some raptors that we could have people get a little more up close and personal with and that's when we brought in um, some of our glove trained raptors such as our American Kestrel, our red tailed Hawk, and our Merlin. My name is Michael and I am one of the bird keepers at Cameron Park Zoo. Here with me is Thundercracker. Uh, Thundercracker is a red tailed Hawk. Uh, Thundercracker came to us in the spring. She was actually found in a zookeeper's backyard. She had an injured left wing and also a severely infected foot. There wasn't too much that could have been done with her, with her left wing. If you can imagine in human terms, missing your hand, that's, that's the condition that she has. Uh, because of that, she does not fly very well. And because she can't fly, she can't be released back into the wild. So when she came here to the zoo, our veterinarian did an amazing job taking care of her. Uh, he gave her a lot of antibiotics and just provided a lot of care to her foot. Uh, thankfully, her feet are nice and healthy now. Uh, so she has a really strong grip, uh, which is why I have to wear this glove so her, so her talons don't, don't accidentally cut my hand. As far as here at the zoo, we mainly feed her rats. Uh, out in the wild, she would be eating rats, squirrels, rabbits, things about that size, small mammals. Uh, but like I said, here we generally just give her, uh, just give her rats. Uh, Red-tailed hawks are native to Texas, and they're actually native to most of the U.S. They do migrate further south into Central, into Central America. We also have a Merlin. Uh, Merlins belong to the falcon family. Uh, our Merlin, his name is Grimlock and he came to us a few months ago from a rehab center here in, in uh, Robinson, which is down the road uh, from Waco here. And uh, Grimlock over there, he's missing his entire left wing. Uh, here at the zoo, he mainly eats mice. Uh, out in the wild, he would be eating mice, uh, lizards, small snakes, even, even other birds. Uh, Merlins are one of, the, one of the species that actively, actively hunts other birds. With, with falcons in general, if you look at their faces, they have a stripe that goes from their eyes almost to their chin, and those are called mustaches. Uh, so if you, ever see, if you ever see a bird with one of those mustaches, uh, then it's a really, really good indicator that, that it's a falcon. Merlins are one of the smaller falcons, uh, the second smallest, in fact. Uh, the, only, the only smaller falcon here in the U.S. at least is the American Kestrel. Uh, Merlins are native to Texas, uh, so you'll find them here in Waco. Here at the zoo, we also have an American Kestrel. Uh, his name is Ratchet. Uh, Ratchet came to us from a rehabilitation center in Nebraska who, who focuses on uh, raptors. Uh, he came to us late winter, early spring, so he's been with us now for a little while. Uh, he has an injured right wing, which prevents him from, from getting full flight. He can get a little bit of lift, a little bit of flight, but definitely not enough to be released back into the wild. A very interesting fact about, uh, about American kestrels is that males and females are sexually dimorphic. Uh, the male American kestrels have that bluish, silvery color on their heads and also on their wings. Uh, females, on the other hand, they have more of that reddish, brownish color on their heads, on their wings, and on their backs. So that's one easy way to, to tell them apart. So behind me is the, uh, our Kara Kara exhibit. They are native here to Central Texas and south into Mexico, as well as a group in Florida. 
Uh, sometimes they're known as the Mexican Eagle. They are more of a scavenger type raptor, like uh, vultures. Like other raptors, they have that sharp beak and sharp talons and very strong legs uh, that makes them a bird of prey. Carrot carrot diets out in the wild are going to consist of uh, carrion, snakes, other reptiles, lizards, small rodents. El Rey de la Montaña exhibit is uh, where our king vultures are. Uh, they are a South American vulture, uh, very uh, pretty bright colors on their heads. Um, the female that we have is one of the oldest that's uh, breeders that was in captivity. She came out of the wild in uh, 1956. Um, so, and she's still been laying eggs. This is the first year she hasn't laid an egg. I believe vultures get a bad rap uh, because they're usually seen on the side of the road next to roadkill. Uh, people associate them with death, uh, but really they're the uh, cleaning crew of the wild. Uh, they come and clean up those dead animals, help stop the spread of disease and other things that uh, would be growing in those dead animals. Hi, my name is Olga and I'm a mammal keeper here at Cameron Park Zoo. I just wanted to talk to you about injured wildlife and what to do if that happens. Ratchet over here is an American kestrel and he has an injured wing. You can see that it's droopy. So with injured wildlife, the best thing to do is call your local rehabilitator. Um, there is a website called wildliferehabinfo.org and they have list of rehabilitators stated by the state and by the county, which makes it very easy. There is a list of phone numbers and addresses there. So if you find injured wildlife or sick wildlife, that's the best place to go. However, not all wildlife needs to be taken, especially if it's a young wildlife and it's taken from their mom. So the best thing to do if you find a baby bird is to take an, any Tupperware container, um, pull some ho holes in the bottom and nail it as high as you can to the tree that you found the bird in and then the parents will continue to feed it. So if there is no injuries that you can see, the mom will continue to feed them and support them and then eventually they're going to be a healthy bird that can fly away. Another important fact about birds in general and especially birds of prey that all birds in the United States are protected by the state of Texas and the federal government, which is called the Fed Federal um, Migratory Bird Act. Um, so it is not only illegal to have them as a pet, but it also Ill it is illegal for you to help them, so feed them anything, especially because humans that aren't trained in wildlife give them the wrong thing to eat and then they get sick and it can be fatal to them. Hi, I'm Amanda Sunkel. I'm one of the bird keepers here at the Cameron Park Zoo. And I am going to talk to you about our lovely eagles that we have back here. Um, we have a female named Liberty and a male named Justice. And to actually have eagles in captivity, there has to be something wrong with them. So that's why they're here. Uh, Liberty, our female, she actually broke both of her feet when she was little and she can't hold on to prey anymore. So that's why she's here. And then Justice, our male, who kind of has a droopy wing when you come here and see him, he actually broke his left wing in three different places and it healed improperly in the wild. So he can't maintain flight. So that's why he's here. And they are federally protected. It's actually illegal to have an eagle feather. So you can get up to a thousand dollar fine for having an eagle feather. And these guys, they have been here roughly around 10 to 15 years. Um, they are a breeding pair if they ever did want to breed, but they kind of don't, they get along, but they're not really into each other like that. They're kind of like brothers and sisters that like to fight all the time. This little guy name is Quigley, and he is an Eastern Screech Owl. They are native to the state of Texas, um, and the reason why we have him here at the zoo, if He's actually looking at me, so you won't be able to see, but he has a cloudy left eye. Um, owls have amazing vision. They are able to see um, mice and rats and little rabbits in the grass from a high distance between the trees and the leaves. So they need both eyes to have that acute vision in order to see them. His eye is cloudy, which means his vision has been compromised and he would not be able to see 
um, so well in the wild. So we got him from a rehabilitator to have him edge an educational owl. All the owls that we have at Brazos at night um, are from rehabbers and they usually have something um, wrong with them. So a lot of these guys just have compromised health um, so they wouldn't be able to make it but with our care they're perfectly happy here. Easter screech owls are between 100 and 220 grams so they actually are really small but they're not the smallest owl. There is a pygmy owl which is going to be about half the size of this guy. And these guys are very important for our ecosystem here in Texas. They do a lot of rodent work that you don't have to, because they eat the rice and the mice and little rodents that you don't want around your house. Screech owls get their name because of the sound that they make. They don't do the usual owl howling. Um, they actually make a screeching sound and they usually do that to call for their young. I'd like to thank you all for joining us today on this edition of Step Into the Wild. I hope you found our segment on Birds of Prey as interesting as I did. Please come out and visit your Cameron Park Zoo soon.